Examiner.com is backstage here at the Hobby Center in Houston, speaking with Anthony Brandt, who is the artistic director of Musica. Anthony, we just saw the first show of the season, Deep Sky Objects, which was fantastic. Um, however, for some of our readers that are possibly new to Musica, could you please say a few words about the vision and mission of Musica, and what are you planning for this season? Gary, thanks so much for being here. Um, Musica's mission is to help sustain classical music as a living tradition, and we do that by performing modern works, both by our five-member artistic board, who are all composers, and also great uh, modern classical music from around the world, including many world premieres. And I think one of the things that distinguishes Musica is we're a place where modern arts meet. We always have another contemporary art form on our concerts, so tonight was Vintage Musica. We had a poetry reading by uh, author Sarah Manguso, a world premiere ballet choreographed by Tina Bonstedt of the Houston Ballet, and of course, uh, Deep Sky Objects, the piece we commissioned by Sebastian Currier with an original libretto by Sarah Manguso. Later this season, um, we are, we've got film and percussion music meet, so we have some wonderful percussion works, um, including a piece celebrating John Cage's 100th birthday, and then films which use the body and scenery for percussive effects. So again, meeting up uh, the arts uh, together. And then on the last concert, uh, in addition to, again, another world premiere, this time by my colleague Rob Smith, we are commissioning a brand new play by winner of the Blackburn Prize in 2012, Jennifer Haley, and I'll write the incidental music for that. So music and theater meet up in that concert. The number that was the, the title number of the night, which was Deep Sky Objects, was, was fantastic. Very eclectic, mesmerizing actually, with a combination of media just in that one number. Right. Could you say a little bit about the putting together of that particular piece and how that developed? So that's a very original idea of Sebastian's. Um, the, his generating idea was that he was uh, writing a love cycle about intergalactic romance. And the poetry by Sarah Manguso is wonderfully open-ended. You're not sure if it's actually a, a physical relationship or something more mystical and spiritual. But in the course of the ten poems, the two lovers get further and further apart. And I think one of the most spectacular features of the music is that it really creates the effect that they're getting further and further apart and space is getting ever more remote. And Part of the idea that Sebastian has was to sort of recapture the 19th century sense of longing that's in a lot of the great love songs of Schubert and Schumann. Uh, he had the voice accompanied by a uh, piano quintet, which is a very standard uh, ensemble from that era. But then also to place us in the future where intergalactic romance might be possible, he created in the electronic studio um, space age sounds. And he drew, I think, on some samples from NASA of pulsars and satellites beeping, and then created this tapestry of uh, electronic sounds that meshes together with the musicians. And uh, it, it really is quite spectacular. They are in quadraphonic sound, so they travel all around the audience. And this meeting of uh, something way more traditional and classical with something futuristic, uh, is, I haven't ever heard anything like it before. Well, it was spectacular, and it was really uh, fun to watch it, and uh, I'll be excited to see what you have coming the rest of the season. Gary, thank you so, so much. So thank you, Anthony, for speaking with Examiner.com, and it was really a pleasure to meet you. Honored to speak with you. Thank you so much.